let's have a lesson on this Risha Carr or Fantasia by Milano. And you can follow the video for free and just pick up um, on some tips about playing Renaissance music and some ideas related to that. But if you're interested, this comes from my um, Classical Guitar Repertoire Lessons Grade 5 book. And in the book, um, you have a couple of pages of lesson material before the piece is presented to kind of introduce you to concepts related to the piece, um, reading practice, and other musical ideas. And there's a link for that underneath the video. So the first thing about this piece is that we're going to use relative lute tuning. So that just means tuning the third string down to F sharp so that we can play in the same, at the same frets with the same fingerings that the composer used in the Renaissance. So you're essentially playing in the same tuning as a lute, relatively speaking. So what you do is you take the G string and you just tune it down. So one good turn, you match it with your F sharp. I like to check the, my A's. So A is now not on the second fret, but on the third fret. So if you've followed the, the rest of my lessons from my graded series, um, in the grade three book and four book, there's pieces with this tuning, so you've, you're probably already familiar with it. Um, this time, though, I would recommend that you try um, the piece with a capo on the 3rd fret. So you just put the capo on the 3rd fret there, and then you're ready to play the piece like that. For the lesson material, though, I think I'll just take the capo off, but um, learning to use the capo will be important, and I'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. So the first exercise from the book is just playing a, a D major scale and two octaves with this tuning to re-familiarize yourself with the tuning. But also, um, as you go through my books, I like to introduce more and more of the guitar to you so you become comfortable reading over the entire guitar um, without you know overdoing the comprehensiveness of it. But as you go through the various books, you'll be introduced to the different positions of the guitar and chords and scales and whatnot. Um, but without having to do too much of it and always in relationship to the repertoire. So let's just go through slowly through this first scale. Um, so I recommend you say the note names out loud. It can be really helpful, but D, E, remember it's your open F sharp, closed G with your first finger, A with your third finger, B, C sharp, sharp open so you can practice that scale and make sure that you're um, familiar and comfortable with it when you do the shift up up positions just make sure that you use your first finger as a guide finger because that's very helpful right you can keep your first finger on that string and also that you're moving your, your arm is moving your whole hand position up, keeping your thumb in the right place, and keeping everything aligned properly when you shift. Okay, so the next thing about this piece, and maybe the most important aspect of this piece, is sustaining the notes and having voice independence. We'll talk about voice independence a little bit more on the next page, but in short, this piece has um, often three voices going simultaneously. And each one of those voices is a horizontal line and an individual musical line that you have to maintain. So trying to maintain um, one voice at a time and make it legato and connect it is really important. When you have two voices, like a bass line and a melody going, then you have to maintain those two. And when you have three voices, it gets even more complicated. And on the guitar, the problem is often that we are lifting fingers too soon and not sustaining the notes. And um, for the most part, all you have to do is try to keep those notes down as long as possible. So I've written out the first two lines of the music uh, and just made some brackets over the sections where you have to remember to sustain. And I didn't mark every single one, but um, nevertheless, I marked a few just to 
as reminders. So if I played these individually, here's the top line, stems going up. three voices there. So you have to maintain that line, but there's also a bass line at the beginning. And then um, around bar 11, you have a third voice enter. becomes its own voice while you're sustaining the other ones. So when we put that all together, keep your fourth finger down, keep your second finger down, keep your second finger down, fourth finger stays down, keep the F until you hear the D, keep your third finger down, keep your bass down, your first finger down, keep your third finger down. You have to keep that third finger down until you hear the continuation of that voice, right? And then keep your first and fourth finger down until it's all completed. So it's tricky to remember to keep all those different notes down, but also to make sure that you're connecting all the voices. You're not thinking of it as vertical chords, but everything is thought of in this horizontal musical lines. Multiple musical lines going horizontally across the staff, and you're connecting those in a legato fashion, with each one having voice independence. So remembering to sustain as much as possible. Um, on the next page, what I did is I wrote out a small section of the music um, starting at bar seven and then underneath that I've written out each individual voice separately. So the passage is that passage we just talked about. So the top voice Here's the middle voice, or the lower voice, sorry. Sorry. So listen to those two voices when I play the example. example a third voice comes in it's a high voice or you could consider that the inner voice comes in but I kind of it kind of the top voice kind of morphs into the inner voice when you get to the end of that passage again keep everything as legato as possible sustain notes as long as possible okay a reach a car um, is kind of um, an early version of the fugue. It's a composition that uses a lot of motivic imitation. Um, so within the work, lots of little musical ideas are passed back and forth across the different voices, the individual musical lines that we were talking about. Um, sometimes they're really close together. Sometimes they're overlapping, that's called stretto. Um, but in this particular case, in the Renaissance, this early on especially, a Ricciacar is not quite as intense as like the Baroque fugue that you might hear from Bach or something like that. So Ricciacars are often um, interchangeable with fantasia, the term. Um, they can be quite free. But nevertheless, they use lots of melodic um, imitation. So for example, in bars 49 to 57, you probably heard the imitation in the voices when I played the piece.
So you can hear those little motivic imitations. Here's the upper voice. There's the little motif. Here's the lower voice. Here's the upper voice again. Here's the inner voice. Because it's debatable what voice is what, but nevertheless, you can hear that little I musical idea, that little phrase being passed up and down across the voices. And this is a very nice and simple example of this. Um, the, it's pretty clear. You hear a statement, then you hear it somewhere else, and then you hear it somewhere else. There's no overlapping versions in this particular case. But um, quite often in this music, you could have multiple motifs being imitated across the voices and overlapping with each other, and it can get very intense, and, and it's very easy to miss the mo motivic imitation. Sometimes um, they can be very hidden. This is a fairly simple example, so you can hear it quite clearly. So let's just do a quick walkthrough of the piece. Again, I'm going to do it without the capo. Um, if you do have the capo on, it's pretty straightforward. You're just playing as normal, pretending this is the first fret. There's only one part, which is at around bar 15, where you have to shift up, right? So your B is, is up here at, the, at this fret. Um, I always recommend just learn the piece first in regular tuning. And then when you put a capo on, it, there's a little uh, adjustment period where you have to get like used to um, some of the shifts and things like that and the way it looks on the guitar. But it is the same, exactly the same fingering with, with the capo. You're just pretending this is the first fret, second fret, third fret. But you know, with like the with the relative loop tuning and the capo, that can confuse people a little bit. So learn it without the capo first, and then put it on and get comfortable with that. So um, I think I'm just going to play through the piece. It's 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 pretty straightforward. It, it's all fingered for you. Um, but I'll just put some reminders of, of when to sustain the notes and be careful that you don't miss the sustain. It's, you'd think it'd be easy to sustain the notes all the time, but it, it's just not. In terms of right hand fingering, by the way, you're just alternating um, your fingers as much as possible. I keep my thumb for the lower, lowest voice and then my fingers for the upper ones alternating as often as possible. But there are lots of times when chords come in, so there will be some repeated fingers. So do your best with that but any fingering is really acceptable. Um, just try to keep the bass voice in the thumb. Even right from the beginning, keep that fourth finger down until you hear the G come in, right? Um, you have to be able to hear the new voice come in if you want to connect it. sharp. I always forget to keep my second finger down there on bar 13. I always let go of it too soon, but you got to keep it all the way to the end of that bar, the, the bar after it's played, right? And then you can lift it. Imitation, inner voice, that first finger down. I forget about that one sometimes. Here, keep your third and fourth finger down. Or you just, sorry, just your fourth finger down. So that you get that D, C sharp, D, and then you're
fourth finger down here until you hear the C sharp. So, um, this music really imitates um, the motets of the of the era, like voice, right? Like a choir. So individual voices, right? Literally voices in that case, right? So the sopranos have their own musical line. The bass voices have their own individual line. The altos have their own individual lines. The tenors have their own individual lines. So you can think you want to get your head and your ear into that mind frame and being thinking very horizontally and sustaining those notes. On the guitar, um, it really means um, keeping your fingers down as long as possible and, and just making sure you don't lift them by accident. Um, our hands like to lift off when things get complicated, but you want to keep them down as long as possible. 